So by way of introduction, I've spent the last 30 years, the first 10 in finance, and then the next 20 implementing technology in support of the financial processes. So I, I was in banking for seven years as a finance professional. I was the uh, global head of consolidated statutory reporting in FPNA for Young and Rubicam for a number of years. And then the technology groups came to find me because as a finance professional, I was always incredibly frustrated because I knew what I wanted to accomplish, right? When you looked at the previous slide, it was, you know, rolling forecasts and driver-based, zero-based budgeting, driver-based budgeting. But more importantly, you know, we as finance professionals always knew what we needed to do, but we would break the technology, right? I like to say that I've spent the last 25 years breaking technology in in efforts to, to sort of incorporate strategic planning, financial planning, operational planning. And, you know, uh, we've all seen what happened in the years of master data management and trying to harmonize everything. So, so um, and I'll, I'll get into my connection with data science um, a little later, but I, I just wanted to give you a sense for, for my perspective. I believe very, very strongly that um, while AI is the future, it is at this point still relatively limited in what we can accomplish, and it's no longer because of the software, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's not breaking anymore. Now it forces us to go back as finance professionals and and really address the things that you know perhaps we should have addressed earlier like change management like master data like you know like process reengineering we've all been through i imagine um, a ton of finance transformation but what's changed now is that it's becoming u ubiquitous data science and data science training is becoming ubiquitous. And so much of my book is, is not about the data science per se, but it's about the process and method to put it into place in the context of what you do already, right? In effect, moving from pockets of experimentation in various you know, functions, maybe customer facing, et cetera, and really starting to look at this concept of enterprise AI, which I think we would probably all agree is still a glimmer in all of our eyes. And so my focus is to sort of bring you my thinking and, and share with the team, because I believe this transformation, which is much more than a finance transformation, um, should be led by the Office of Finance, right, because of the connection to strategy. So, so. Uh, um, depending on your age, you will have, you know, seen any part of these. But of course, when we had traditional BI and reporting, it was great, but we were all looking in the rearview mirror. And so when things like OLAP and, you know, multidimensional analytics was available, data marts and OLAP, um, we finally had the opportunity to have a real dialogue with our data, right? It was the first time that Nabisco could you know, project fully loaded profitability for a roll of lifesavers in peppermint, Christmas packaging in Ohio, through this distributor, through convenience stores, you know, sold by this individual, right? That's, you know, that's seven dimensions already, doesn't even take the chart of accounts and, you know, and, and time series into account. And, and what we found during those years is that um, we then, went from being able to build very sophisticated models to then moving to the next aspiration, which was how do we connect operational forecasting and, and um, you know, doing things like with Canon, where um, the FP&A process was then shared across sales, marketing, finance, um, you know, the supply chain. So, and now we find ourselves at a time where these tools are available to us, but we have to be very judicious in how we implement them because, you know, success begets success. And so, you know, as we're trying to transform or incorporate the use 
of the tools and, and the methodologies that we now have that are related to data science. And, and you know, I, I don't really like the term artificial intelligence. I prefer to, to use um, augmented intelligence. So, so this is just the timeline. And Larissa, you can go to the next one, please. So uh, as part of the research for the book, um, I, I sort of lumped categorically all corporations into three major buckets, right? Because everybody is talking about the promise of AI. But if you look at many of the early use cases, you know, they were either not finance specific um, or they were from organizations who had been built in the data industry. So big data architects. So you know, the Googles, Amazons, Ubers, et cetera. And then the next grouping are those emerging firms. And many of you I'm sensing from, from some of the earlier slides have been, you know, successful in implementing it um, in pockets, whether it's supporting the FPNA process or in organizations where it's been successfully applied to, you know, maximizing revenue through the voice of the customer, et cetera. But there are many organizations who are sort of still in that traditional structure who are struggling with where to get started right so um, so the one thing I want to the one thing I would like to point out on this slide is that in the early days of, of applied data science meaning only five years ago right um, the messaging was that build a data lake, and you can just throw everything into it and you don't have to worry about, you know, the master data hierarchies, et cetera. And unfortunately, many people took that um, as, as fact and built data lakes that today, you know, are unusable and in fact created a larger problem than, say, IT had before they made the data lake. I had uh, an information company that called me once and, and they said, you know, I built a data lake and nobody came, right? But they, the, the reason they didn't is because there was no business trust in the data lake because they weren't part of the implementation, part of the journey. Larissa, next slide, please. So, I had the opportunity uh, in February to present with a gentleman uh, from Stanley Black and Decker, Latin America, and I, you know, I, I do have permission to share this information out from them. Um, what what they were struggling with was um, their forecast accuracy was incredibly low, and it was some of it was information gathering. But some of it was finding, you know, not being able to identify the uncertainties in their forecasts. And, um, you know, one thing you you may have noticed, but is very important, is that is that the market, the technology market, is beginning to bring products uh, to the commercial market that sort of insulate the business person from much of the more complex data science underlying it and you know what we used to call purpose-built applications right and so I'm watching um, the adoption of many of those and this uh, this Stanley Black and Decker uh, finance professional who I would like to actually introduce to um, this uh, this organization you know he uh, started looking around for how do I find something that I can use to access my data and do some complex analytics <clears throat> in order to enhance my forecasting capabilities. And so they did pick um, a software product, not a tool set, right? So this isn't open source in Hadoop. It's a, a product called R4, um, but there are a number of products popping up now in the market where um, I'm much more confident than I was maybe five years ago, <clears throat> excuse me. And so, you know, the challenges they were having was they didn't have the right inventory in the right place. There were um, things going on in the financial models that were driving, you know, even more volume in the wrong places. 
Um, there was no communication around discounting. So, you know, we've, we've all had those struggles with cross-functional communication and, uh, and it, it hit the balance sheet, right? So it had a financial impact to the organization. And so what they began to do is, is build a model to incorporate um, dynamic demand forecasting into their financial forecast. But the way what they were doing, which is, you know, quote unquote, the big data piece is they began to pull in um, demographics around each of the retail locations and, you know, things that we've seen in a lot of various use cases today, but specifically um, geared towards forecast accuracy um, and uh, and and so they selected the tool that they did because it had the ability to to allow them to model it a lot of, a lot of different ways. I think the closest corollary to the pre big data uh, applications would be something like um, Hyperion Strategic Finance, you know, where we were doing things like Goal Seek in the early days, but we were still not incorporate, incorporating any external data. Um, I do. I can tell you that this is not a new concept, right? We were doing this. I think uh, we've we've got someone from Pepsi either on the line or or certainly as as a member. Um, I remember working with Pepsi in 2000 to bring in weather data, right? So the first you know incorporation of external data to enrich the the forecasting process. Further, we we began to incorporate econometric data. Um, and what we were doing was looking for leading indicators that we were not previously aware of. And, and when you think about the current application of AI um, and machine learning, you know, this is absolutely the best application for that. So the, you know, the results that Stanley Black and Decker Latam were able to show was that you know, their forecast accuracy literally improved by 60%. And that translates into, you know, fairly material money <laughs> um, for for them in, in LATAM. And they're now going to consider rolling it out sort of globally. Um, but as I was saying earlier, you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence which is you know just the application of advanced mathematics is allowing us to now talk about this concept of enterprise ai so which other yeah. yes my apologies but there is one minute left one minute okay yeah. so <laughs> let's go to the next slide then okay and so here's you know, as I travel around and I speak with CFOs, here are some of the things that I'm hearing. First of all, the, the conversation in the C-suite revolves around artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. And when I speak to my, my uh, EPM colleagues, you know, they're saying, why, why are we now being seen as a commodity? Why isn't, you know, EPM or corporate performance management, as Gartner calls it, you know, no longer the main topic? And you know we're watching this commoditization of what what we used to call EPM, CPM, BPM, depending on you know the vendor. But fundamentally, the question becomes: How do we turn? Let's say we have a hundred financial analysts, right? But we always have ten that are sort of the strategic operations finance folks. They have access to absolutely everything, the best tools. They're involved in strategy setting. And what I believe we have to start thinking about is how do we prepare the other 90 to evolve into that kind of a role? And not everyone will, but that should be, you know, the goal. And technology, just an enabler, right? It's it's people we're going to have to reskill. It's the cultures we have to change. It's the processes we have to change in order to, you know, even approximate something like enterprise AI or get our workforce ready for the future. So, you know, I'm a very strong believer in don't do anything in data science unless it solves a problem that is directly linked to your, you know, your organizational strategy. 
and and do it um, in a for now centralized sort of way, but do it communicate out and bring the entire organization along with you. Um, Larissa, the last one. And you'll all have this this uh, this slide, but you know, really, what I'm trying to to share is sort of what is the landscape of of best practices look like because we are the group that will build those. So with that, I will uh, pause, and you guys can go back and look at this particular slide. You'll all have the deck. So um, I'm happy to to open it up to any questions and what would actually asking you what would be useful for you um, in in a next brief out as uh, you know I spend my time on on this topic I want to bring you information I um, so let me know what what that might be also uh, thank you so much Dina thank you for sharing your experience with us um, 